American College of Sports Medicine Personal Trainer Practice Test No. 2 Question 26 Which of the following bones is not part of the axial skeleton? A. Skull B. Spine C. Tibia D. Sternum Answer, C. The tibia is not part of the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton consists of the skull, spine, ribs, and sternum. These bones form the longitudinal axis. Question, 27. How many bones make up the skull? A. 13. B. 23. C. 29. D. 32 Answer C. The skull is made up of 29 bones. Many of these become fused together during development and shortly after birth. One very important skull bone, the mandible, is a helpful landmark for locating the carotid pulse. Question 28 what is not a function of the axial skeleton? A. Supports and protects organs. B. Produces hormones for delivery throughout the body. C. Forms the longitudinal axis. D. Provides an attachment site for muscles. Answer. B. The axial skeleton does not produce hormones for delivery throughout the body. This function is performed by the endocrine system, not by any aspect of the skeletal system. Question 29. What structure acts as the main axial support for the body? A. Skull B. Sternum C. Ribs D. Spine Answer, D. The spine is the main axial support for the body. It is made up of bones called vertebrae with cartilaginous discs between each vertebra known as intervertebral discs. Question, 30. How many thoracic vertebrae are found in the spine? A. 4 B. 5 C. 7 D. 12 Answer, D. There are 12 thoracic vertebrae found in the spine. These are roughly located in the upper back area, below the neck, cervical, and above the lower back, lumbar. Question, 31. Which of the following is not a bone that consists of several other bones fused together? A. Ulna B. Skull C. Coccyx D. Sacrum Answer, A. The ulna is a single bone and does not consist of other bones fused together. The skull, sacrum, and coccyx consist of several bones that fuse together late during development or shortly after birth. Question, 32. What is the outer? fibrocartilaginous portion of intervertebral discs called a annulus fibrosus b nucleus pulpitus c lumbar vertebra d xiphoid process answer a the outer fibrocartilaginous portion of intervertebral discs is called the annulus fibrosus. The inner gelatinous portion is the nucleus pulpitus. Question 33. What is the main function of the annulus fibrosus? A. Transmits forces evenly across the disc and deforms easily. B. 
binds the vertebrae together and resists destructive forces to the spine. C. Provides a space for the spinal cord. D. Attracts and holds water within the structure. Answer. B. The main function of the annulus fibrosus is to bind the vertebrae together and resist destructive forces to the spine. This helps to maintain safe alignment of the spine. Question 34. What is the function of the intervertebral discs? A. Absorb shock and bear weight. B. Bear weight and provide hydration to the spinal cord. C. Prevent fusion of the vertebrae. D. Provide a fusion site for the sacrum. Answer. A. The function of the intervertebral discs is to absorb shock and bear weight. They work in concert with other structures of the spine to allow smooth, safe movement and resist injury due to their pliable, flexible nature. Question 35. Which of the following is a normal curvature of the spine directed in an anterior convexity? A. Sacral. B. Scoliosis. C. Lumbar. D. Hyperlordosis. Answer. C. The lumbar curve along with a cervical curve, is called a lordosis. They are both normal, anteriorly directed convexities of the spine. Both lordosis curves are secondary because they develop as an infant progresses in weight bearing. Question 36. Which of the following is a normal, primary curve in the sagittal plane? A. Sacral. B. Cervical. C. Lumbar. D. Lordosis. Answer. A. The sacral curve is a normal, primary curve in the sagittal plane. Along with the thoracic curve, the primary curves of the spine, known as kyphosis, retain the same curvature as they had in the fetus. They are oriented with a posteriorly directed convexity. Question 37. What type of curvature of the spine is developed as an infant progresses in weight bearing? A. Scoliosis. B. Kyphosis. C. Primary. D. Secondary. Answer D. Secondary curves are curvatures of the spine that develop as an infant progresses in weight bearing. Cervical and lumbar curves are secondary curvatures of the spine. Question 38. What is an abnormal curve of the spine that is an exaggerated anterior lumbar curvature? A. Scoliosis. B. Hyperlordosis. C. Hyperkyphosis. D. Xiphosis. Answer. B. An abnormal curve of the spine that is an exaggerated anterior lumbar curvature is hyperlordosis. This curvature abnormality is found in the sagittal plane. Question 39. What anatomical factor defines a rib as a true rib? A. Whether or not it is made of bone, versus cartilage. B. Whether or not it articulates directly to the sternum. C. Whether it articulates to the stern or the xiphoid process. D. All the ribs are true ribs. Answer. B. Whether or not a rib articulates directly to the sternum defines it as a true rib. The other ribs do not articulate directly to the sternum. These other ribs articulate with the rib superior to it or remain free of articulation. Question 
40. Which ribs do not articulate to anything? A. Rib pairs 1 4. B. Rib pairs 5 7. C. Rib pair 8 10. D. Rib pair 11 and 12. Answer, D, rib pairs 11 and 12 do not articulate to anything. Their cartilaginous ends remain free, unlike the more superior ribs which connect either to each other or directly to the sternum. Question, 41. How many pairs of ribs are in the body? A. 5 B. 7 C. 12 D. 24 Answer, C. There are 12 pairs of ribs in the body. Seven of these are true ribs, which articulate to the sternum, and the other five pairs articulate either to each other, the rib superior to it, or to nothing. Question, 42. What is the importance of the intercostal space between the true ribs? A. Locates correct placement for electrocardiography electrodes. B. Locates correct placement of hands during cardiopulmonary resuscitation. C. Locates correct placement for performing a tracheotomy. D. This intercostal space has no more significance than the other intercostal spaces. Answer, A. The intercostal space between the true ribs is important because it locates the correct placement for electrocardiography electrodes. The correct placement is located in the fourth and fifth intercostal spaces. Question. 43. Which of the following is not a part of the sternum? A. Xiphoid process. B. Body. C. Kyphosis. D. Manubrium. Answer. C. The kyphosis is not a part of the sternum, rather. It is a description of a primary curvature of the spine. Question 44. What part of the sternum is an important landmark that should be palpated in order to locate correct placement of the hands during CPR? A. Xiphoid process. B. Sternal angle. C. Manubrium. D. Carotid artery. Answer, a the xiphoid process is the part of the sternum that should be located for correct placement of the hands during CPR. This part of the sternum is the most inferior, lowest point on the sternum. Question, 45. What part of the sternum is important to help locate paddle placement for defibrillation? A. Xiphoid process. B. Sternal angle. C. Manubrium. D. Carotid artery. Answer. C. The manubrium is important to help locate paddle placement for defibrillation. This is located in the most superior, highest, position of the sternum on the midline of the chest. Question. 46. What bones make up the appendicular skeleton? A. Arms, legs, and spine. B. Arms, legs, skull, and pelvic girdle. C. Arms, legs, and pelvic girdle. D. Arms, legs, pectoral, and pelvic girdles. Answer, D. The arms, legs, pectoral, and pelvic girdles make up the appendicular skeleton. These function together to attach the limbs to the trunk of the body. Question, 
47. What anatomical orientation refers to the fingers as compared to the shoulder? A. Distal B. Proximal C. Anterior D. Superior Answer, A, the anatomical orientation that refers to the fingers as compared to the shoulder is distal. This means the fingers are further from the body, torso, or point of reference, than the shoulder. Question, 48. What is the description of the anatomical locating term medial? A. The anatomy referred to is relatively closer to the body's midline. B. The anatomy referred to is relatively further from the body's midline. C. The anatomy referred to is relatively closer to the head. D. The anatomy referred to is relatively further from the head. Answer A. The anatomical locating term medial means the anatomy referred to is relatively closer to the body's midline. An example is that the adductors are on the medial side of the thigh because that is the side that is closest to the midline of the body. Question, 49. What part of the appendicular skeleton is important for locating the proper placement of electrodes for ECG and defibrillation? A. Scapulae B. Clavicle C. Sternum D. Femur Answer, B, the clavicle is important for locating the proper placement of electrodes for ECG and defibrillation. They articulate with the sternum and scapulae just above the first rib. Question, 50. The inferior angle of the scapula is a landmark used for what purpose? A. Locating correct placement for ECG electrodes. B. As a skinfold site for body fat assessment. C. To determine a client's frame size. D. Provide structural support to ribs. Answer. B. The inferior angle of the scapula is a landmark used as a skinfold site for body fat assessment. It is located at the bottom of the scapulae at the junction of the medial and lateral borders. Thank you to everyone for subscribing, rating, faving, and commenting my video and channel.